Getting that US green card sounds like a dream come true, right? Is it really old sunshines and unicorns? Is it more of a burden than a blessing? There are three major downsides to getting US residency. Before we get started, consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you want to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, then please smash that like button now. One of the major downsides of getting US residency, of getting a green card, is the reporting of foreign bank and financial accounts. Now, if you have not really been living in the United States, if you are not a US citizen, if you are not a resident, if you have never paid taxes in the United States, you probably don't know what I'm talking about right here, right now. Basically, the FBAR, that's what it's called, it's the abbreviation, the FBAR, meaning the reporting of foreign bank accounts and financial accounts, is a necessity, is an obligation for every U.S. green card holder, for every U.S. resident who happens to own foreign bank accounts and financial accounts overseas. Now, the thing is that you are required by law to report all these accounts, right? And the maximum account value of each account every year. You know, it doesn't matter if you have one account or 57 accounts, as long as the total value that you have overseas exceeds $10,000, you're obligated by law to report it to the IRS. It's a special form. It is included on your tax return. It is an absolute necessity. The lowest penalty for non-willful failure to report the FBAR, to report your financial account is $10,000. But should the IRS decide that it was willful failure to report, then you could face a fine of up to $100,000 or 50% of the total account value. This does not sound like a lot of fun, right? So, you know, if you are a US resident or citizen, I really want you to take this seriously. When we're talking about reporting of foreign bank accounts and financial accounts, we're talking about literally everything and anything. So, meaning, if you have some kind of crypto accounts, right, if you are with crypto exchanges, that, are, that don't belong to US institutions, you know, that are not US owned, then you are supposed, you are required by law to report those accounts to the IRS. You know, you have to do it. There is some networks, some crypto exchanges like Binance that now set up a specific site for US residents and citizens. So meaning before it used to be just one site, but a couple of years ago, Binance, as well as many other exchanges, decided, you know what, we're going to set up a dedicated site just for Americans, just for green card holders, just for people that need to pay their taxes in the US. Some crypto exchanges have gone much further and they have decided, you know what, we don't accept any US residents or citizens on our website. We don't want to deal with US customers because it is a huge obligation for us as well. It's not just a huge obligation for their customers that are required by law to report you know, their maximum account value to the IRS. And, and obviously also all gains and, lo and losses need to be kept track on as well. So, but also the institution, the company, the exchange has, you know, reporting requirements. They need to report it. They need to disclose those accounts. If not, they can have problems and they will have problems. In case you have any bank accounts, you know, if you have a bank in Hong Kong, if you have a company in Hong Kong, if it's a corporate account, it doesn't matter. You can have a corporate account in Ireland. Let's say you have a very tax friendly corporate account set up in Ireland, you know, so you don't pay a lot of corporate taxes. You are also required to report the corporate money that you have, you know, that financial account to the IRS. As long as you are the founder, the co-founder, as long as you have access to the financial account, as long as you are some kind of substantial person that's involved in the business, you are required to report it also to the IRS. That may come as a complete surprise to you because we're talking about businesses, overseas businesses. The US government, the IRS, doesn't necessarily have insight, you know, into certain countries. You know, they're not really able to get that data easily. I mean, they have a lot of treaties with most countries, but there are some countries that don't have treaties with the United States. So that's for foreign bank accounts, right? Let's talk about other financial accounts. Like if you were a stock trader, right? If, if you were a Forex trader and you do it with a non-US account, then that account must be included in your FBAR, in the yearly uh, 
document that you sign, right? Let's say you have an account in Switzerland, you have an account in Singapore, Malaysia, Australia, you know, wherever that account may be, you need to report it. You're a stock trader, you know, if you're a crypto trader, a currency trader, right? A forex trader, you need to report that as well. Any securities that you can think of, precious metals, you know, if you own gold and silver overseas, you know, let's say in Switzerland, in Hong Kong, in Singapore, in New Zealand, you know, if you own gold, if you have any financial account, you know, that's associated with precious metals, with gold and silver, then that must be included in the F bar as well. Like I said, the penalties for not reporting, you know, certain accounts, because the IRS will find those accounts eventually. And if you fail to report those accounts, and if it was willful failure, then you may face a huge penalty for not reporting it. And that is something that a lot of you as residents that just recently obtained their green card are not aware of. So having a green card is a huge obligation. Another big con is that green card holders are subject to worldwide income tax. That means you may be living in the United States, you may be earning an income in the United States, and you may be earning an income overseas as well. Let's say you are employed by a company in England. The company pays you money, right? That income needs to be reported as well. You know, if it's personal income, it needs to be reported. You know, you are subject to your worldwide income. And that's another, I would wanna say a downside because not all countries do that. There are certain countries that only tax their residents on local income, you know, on income that is generated within that country, but they don't go as far as, you know what, we're also gonna charge our residents and citizens for money that they make on our continent. I mean, let's say Asia, let's say Africa, let's say Latin America, it doesn't matter. We don't do that. Most Western countries have systems in place, they have tax laws in place that require their residents and citizens to report their worldwide income, be it personal income, corporate income, and also pay taxes on it. I mean, on the corporate income, you don't pay taxes, you know? Wherever your business is situated, that's where you pay your corporate taxes. But personal income, there's many countries that have that in place. And this goes beyond employment income, right? We're not just talking about you working for a company, you being a freelancer, kind of a remote worker, you have another position. No, we're talking about everything here, the whole package. We're talking about crypto income, right? Stock trading, you know, any kind of securities you buy and sell for profit. If you have, again, precious metals or if anything that you do, any type of income that you have from overseas must be reported to the IRS. And if you fail to do that, you can guess what's about to happen to you. Nothing positive. You may face, again, huge fines, penalties, and potentially prison time. The last con is a very hidden one that, again, not a lot of people are aware of, but you need to be aware of those things before you commit to becoming a resident of a country. The last thing that I wanted to talk with you about in this video is the exit tax. Like the word says, exit tax, it is a tax that you pay upon your departure from the United States. There are certain rules in place here. The exit tax does not apply to everyone. It only applies to people that you know, we're a long-term resident of the United States. If you've been living in the United States for eight consecutive years over the past 15 years, the exit tax may apply to you. Another scenario when the exit tax may apply to you is in case you have a net worth of over $2 million. That would be another example. Another time when it applies is in the event that you had an increase in income for at least five consecutive years, right? So let's say year one, you made 120 grand, year two, you made 140 grand, year three, you made 200 grand, year four, you made 250, and year five, you made 300 grand. In this event, the exit tax may also apply to you. Exit tax is a big thing because it's up to 30% of your net worth. Now, how much it's going to be exactly is difficult for me to tell. I'm not a professional tax advisor. I'm, I'm no accountant, you know, there's a lot of scenarios in which, you know, you may only pay 
15 or 20 percent or even a lower number and in some instances 30 percent it depends on a lot of factors depends on how long you have lived in the united states how much money you have made how big your net worth is you know it's the whole package you know so the irs are going to take a look at it and they'll then decide how much the exit tax will be are you still keen to live in the united states what do you think about these three burdens that we just discussed in this video leave a comment below and let us know consider subscribing if you haven't already i'm uploading new videos on digital nomad locations travel updates and visas several times a week right now i highly recommend that you grab a free copy of my ebook nomad elite the insider's guide to retaining a life of freedom all you need to do is click on the link below the video and if you got some more time left check out these videos thank you for watching